Mount Gambia sits in South Australia's southeast, a region called the Limestone Coast. Known for its giant sinkhole in the middle of town, a lot of logging, a surprisingly large lake, and some more logging. But it's also notable for another reason. Mount Gambia is one of extremely few cities in Australia's top largest 50 that have no rail connection at all. The closest train to Mount Gambia is at Haywood, some 90 kilometres away. Why is this? And also perhaps more importantly, how and why Mount Gambia may see trains again? To start our story, we have to go pretty far back in time. Now, the first train reached Mount Gambia in 1887, but this line was part of South Australia's attempt to make the state almost impossible to navigate, as the line was built to narrow gauge, gauge being the distance between two tracks. While the network between Adelaide and Melbourne was built to broad gauge, a much wider gauge, which means passengers and goods had to swap at Worsley, where the gauges met. This is an idea so galaxy-brained, it's likely to be what inspired SA to build the one-way freeway many years later. But anyway, by the 1950s, the line had been converted to broad gauge, and trains, be they passenger or freight, could finally reach Mount Gambia from Adelaide without having to change literally everything at Worsley. Originally, the line was used for both passenger and freight trains, but by the time of its closing in 1995, only freight trains visited Mount Gambia and the stations along the line. Originally, the line was operated by steam trains, but in the 1950s, new diesel electric trains called Bluebirds, seen here, were used along the line. By 1990s, these trains were in such a state of disrepair, and the track was in such poor condition, that rail, com rail travel was no longer competitive compared to road. Australia National, who owned the lines, was not willing to invest in new trains or upgrading the track to make the service faster. This combined with Australian National's lack of interest in passenger rail services, this meant that the train service ceased on the 31st of December 1990 and was replaced with road coaches. There was a problem with freight rail, however, and that was that Perth and Melbourne remained disconnected from each other. As the line was broad gauge and the rest of the country was by this time standard gauge, it meant that freight going between Melbourne and Perth had an impractical and inconvenient journey to reach it. Freight could either be trucked to Adelaide and then put on a train, or freight could go all the way by train but have to be shipped between carriages of different gauges in Adelaide. Both these processes were very time consuming and expensive, and meant freight between these two cities had an uncompetitive disadvantage compared to other cities on the east coast. As part of the plan to fix this, Australian National, by this time the owner of all rail lines in South Australia, asked the federal government for permission to standardise the line. The federal government obliged, and as part of the One Nation program, no, not that One Nation, agreed to standardise the line. However, the project, being funded by the federal government in the 1990s, was done incredibly cheaply. As part of the project, no grain lines in South Australia were going to be standardised originally, and the line between Mount Gambia and Adelaide would com be completely cut off and remain as broad gauge due to what was perceived as a lack of freight using the line to receive the funds. While this time no passenger train had run from Adelaide to Mount Gambia in five years, so that was also not seen as a priority to keep it for that service. So, on the 12th of April 1995, the last train left Mount Gambia, made up of old locomotives, carriages, and old rolling stock that had to be taken back to Adelaide. And the rail line, apart from a short-lived tourist operation, hasn't seen a train since. Mount Gambia has converted a lot of the rail right-of-way throughout the township into a very nice-looking shared-use path, and a very nice community centre in the middle of town. Throughout the rest of the limestone coast, it's pretty bleak. Places like Narracourt, Panola and Millicent are now just overgrown former husks of the rail yards they used to hold. So that's the end of the story, right? Like many South Australian railway lines, it's closed forever, never see a train again. No, not quite. Because, well, there is still a bit of hope for this rail line. 
In 2019, the CSRAO was commissioned to do a study into freight transport in South Australia's southeast and Victoria's western district. As part of this project, they looked at re-establishing rail between Mount Gambier and Adelaide or Melbourne. The study found that rail between Mount Gambier and Worsley being rebuilt was not economically viable, as a lot of freight from Mount Gambier flows eastwards rather than westwards. So therefore, it would cost more money and it was also longer than the other alternative. That alternative being between Mount Gambier and Hayward. Some 90 kilometres in length, the line hasn't been used since 1995. However, to the surprise of some, it was found that the line would be economically viable. Yes, really. The line would cost approximately $150 million to rebuild to an acceptable modern standard, would see 1.8 kilometre long freight trains in line with the rest of Australia, and could be hauled by two modern heavy locomotives. A project like that would see major benefits to South Australia's southeast and would be used by many industries, such as forestry, livestock, and agriculture, including some places such as the Millicent Paper Mill, one of Australia's largest who currently have no alternative other than road freight, clogging up roads in South Australia's southeast. The rail line being reinstated would reduce the cost of road maintenance and road congestion in Mount Gambier. It would lead to a higher amenity of the local community in Mount Gambier and the surrounding area and would lead to ro lower road fatalities. As of 2021, there isn't currently any money actually committed to the project. However, calls are growing to reopen the railway line. 2020, the campaign to reopen the rail line has escalated, including articles in, ma in major media publications and a submission to Infrastructure Australia to look seriously at the proposal. While the project does seem quite hard to fund, a combination of South Australian and Victorian state governments in addition to whatever the federal government feels like it has to contribute, all being part of making this a very complicated and hard to manage project between very different transport agencies and regulations in each state. It does seem like for the first time in a very long time, there is actually a momentum to bring a train back to Mount Gambier. So in conclusion, Mount Gambier has seen two different gauges so far in its history, and it may see a third sometime soon being one of the only places in the world where that has ever happened. While this project does look like it's quite far off in the horizon, it does seem, for the first time, that it is, it is actually on the horizon. And that, if you check this video back in 2025, I may have either been hilariously wrong, or you may be able to go train spot in Mount Gambia.